Hey guys, just a reminder, this is not official medical advice or such. Please seek an appointment with a licensed medical provider. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how's it going? Doing good. How about you? I'm so glad to be here. This is one of those topics that we hear all the time. You, yeah. you, you've read about it, but you have a different approach, and I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are on the lipid panel. Yeah. So first, I want to go over, like, if you go to your primary care, what kind of lipid panel you're going to get and what you're going to be seeing on that. Um, so when you go to a regular doctor, get a standard lipid panel, it's going to include several different things. First is going to be your total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, okay. triglycerides, cholesterol to HDL ratio, non-HDL cholesterol, um, and then sometimes they'll throw in another ratio of like your LDL to HDL or something like that, but that one's less common to see on there. Okay. So what do all those mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Um, so total cholesterol is a calculation where they add together your HDL, your LDL, and then 20% of your triglyceride level. Okay. All three of those are added together. Goal here, traditional goal, is to have this less than 200. Okay. Years ago, the goal used to be less than 300, so that goal is constantly changing. Um, so from a traditional medicine standpoint, they want it less than 200. Your HDL, this is a high-density lipoprotein. We also call this your good cholesterol. This one is a, um, it transports cholesterol, so it helps to remove cholesterol from the body and bring it back to the liver. Okay. Um, ideal for HDL is going to be at least over 50 for men and at least over 60 for women. But for HDL, the higher the better. Can't be too high. Can't be too high. Okay. We love a good high HDL. Um, LDL is also known as low density lipoprotein. Uh, they more traditionally call this one your bad cholesterol. Okay. LDL is the one that is more likely to build up inside the arteries, which is why they call it the bad one. Okay. Uh, it's the transport from the liver out into the body. So the liver produces most of our cholesterol, and it's got to be moved around somewhere. So it binds to that LDL. LDL takes it out to the body. Cholesterol is needed out there, so it takes it out there. But it goes to the arteries. Goes, it, it can. Okay. It's more likely to build up in those arteries okay. than other types. Um, so traditionally, they want this level to be under 100 is now the parameter that they put on there. Um, so again, LDL is carrying it out to the body. But whenever you actually get down to what LDL is, it's actually very rich in antioxidants. LDL is not as bad as what they make it out to be it becomes more of an issue when it loses that antioxidant property and becomes oxidized. Okay. And so that's why on our Cleveland, we look at oxidized LDL. Because that's really the bad Because one. that's really the bad one. Okay. LDL itself, not as bad as they make it out to be. Okay. Um, then the triglycerides level. So triglycerides are a type of fat that's in the body. So it's not actually cholesterol, it's a type of fat. So whenever you eat excess calories, the body has to decide what to do with them. A lot of times it will store those excess calories as triglycerides. And they store those triglycerides in your fat cells so it can be released later for energy. Okay, so okay. triglycerides are good, kind of. In theory. <laughs> When they become bad is when we have too many of them. Okay. So if high levels are typically created from chronically eating in a calorie excess, especially high carb, high sugar foods. Okay. So whenever I see high triglycerides, I'm immediately thinking metabolic syndrome. Huh. Because that's typically what you're going to find. So Interesting. Ideal level for triglycerides is going to be less than 150. Okay. That's where they like to keep that one. Um, then we look at your cholesterol to HDL ratio. So this is just your um, total cholesterol number divided by your HDL number. Preferably, we want this to be less than 5 or 5 to 1, if, depending on how they're reporting it. So say your total cholesterol is 200 and your HDL is 50, your ratio is going to be 4 to 1 or 4. Okay. So that would be considered an appropriate cholesterol to HDL ratio. Interesting. Okay. And these are like, these are important numbers for yeah. patients to know. Yeah, like, they absolutely. They need to know how to look at this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so then you have your non-HDL cholesterol and all this is just your total cholesterol number minus the HDL. Okay. Okay. So that's the standard things that you're going to be told. Um, but what's missing 
is really important. So there is one number that they do not report out on these that you have to calculate on your own. In a standard lipid panel. In a standard lipid panel. Okay. But this is one of the most important things that I pull from a standard lipid panel, and that's gonna be your triglycerides to HDL ratio. Personally, I put more emphasis on that triglycerides to HDL ratio than I do on what your total cholesterol is, because it's that important. So the higher your HDL, the, the better the ratio. The better the ratio so yeah. you can afford to have more triglycerides. Yes, okay. yeah. So whenever we're looking at that ratio, we want the ratio to be less than two. If people are really high risk for cardiovascular disease, we wanna get that ratio to less than one. So what you do is you take your triglycerides number and you divide it by your HDL number. So if your triglycerides number is 180 and your HDL is 60, 180 divided by 60, your ratio is gonna be three. Okay. This is too high. This tells us that we probably have a metabolic issue going on. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's super important because that ratio can actually predict the risk of cardiovascular disease, insulin resistance, um, coronary artery disease, like it's a very predictive number. And are people getting this to see if they're in metabolic syndrome or, I know it's such, it's such a standard panel. Yeah, Okay. most people just go to the doctor every single year, they get a fasted lipid panel done. Oh, and of note, triglycerides will be affected by your fasting status. So this has to be done on a fasted lipid panel for the triglycerides to be accurate. So you recommend patients get fasting? Fasted. Okay. Some doctors will be like, eh, it's not a big deal. We'll just draw your lipid panel. And it doesn't affect the total cholesterol too much, but it will absolutely affect that triglycerides level. So your triglycerides to HDL ratio is only accurate if it's a fasting ratio. Fa fasting 12? At least eight. At least eight, okay. At least eight hours, yeah. Okay. Um, so if we have a high ratio, again, that's making me think we've got some sort of metabolic issue, um, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, something like that. So my next step is we're going to get an insulin level and an A1C to see if we have any sort of insulin resistance going on. Would you do that with or once you get the lipid panel back? Depends on the person. Okay. If I know that they've had a history of having high cholesterol um, or if they tell me like, yeah, my triglycerides are always high, I'm just going to go ahead and get that fasting A1C and fasting insulin level with it. Got it. Okay. 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 And we've got videos on insulin resistance, but just a little refresher, you can have elevated insulin without having diabetes or prediabetes or elevated glucose. Insulin is like the first thing that happens. Oh, so you want to catch that. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So if people are like, well, I know I'm not pre-diabetic, that's great. You could still be insulin resistant. So the insulin piece is different. Not many people look at that. Is it is the way that, you know, the A1C plus the insulin, that's all on the Cleveland? This Yeah. Okay. All of it's on the Cleveland, okay. which is why I love the Cleveland. Um, but if you're seeing a standard doctor, right. this is the standard lipid panel that you're getting. These are the extra tests that you could ask for and be looking at. Got it. Um, so oftentimes a high triglyceride level is a blood sugar problem, not a cholesterol problem. A high triglyceride level mm -hmm. is a blood sugar problem, mm -hmm. not in cholesterol problem. Cholesterol. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like people blame cholesterol for everything. For, a lot. for everything. It is not as bad as people say it is. <laughs> um, so if your total cholesterol is elevated, but it's elevated because of a high triglyceride, and then you have a high triglyceride to HDL ratio, we don't need to be starting on a statin or something like that, we need to be looking to see where the insulin resistance is coming from, where the inflammation is coming from. Got it, okay. yes, absolutely. So if you go to your doctor and they do a lipid panel and they tell you, hey, your cholesterol's high, we just need to start a medicine to lower it, but they've not talked to you about your ratios, they've not talked to you about your diet, your exercise, your lifestyle, anything like that, run away, go find someone different. Mm. All they're doing is putting a pill for a problem instead of looking for why a problem is there. Mm. Um, it, it was a much better approach to look and see what's going on and what we can fix versus just starting a medicine to try to drop something that we don't even know why it's happening. You know, it's so funny when we do these episodes of Explain This, it becomes, you know, so clear to me, like how people can end up on just a bunch of medications. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's very, it, like just standard stuff like this, you yeah. get put on a medication. And, and it's super standard with this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Your cholesterol's absolutely. 225, we need to put you on a statin. Yeah. Okay, well, why is the cholesterol right. elevated? And is it actually a risk? Because again, the, the standard used to be a total of less than 300. Mm. They keep tightening those parameters thinking that they're gonna reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and it's not 
changing much. Mm. Cardiovascular disease is still on the rise. Um, and so that's where I want people to understand what cholesterol actually does for the body. It's not the culprit that we try to make it out to be historically. Um, so cholesterol makes up your cell membranes. Every single cell in the body relies on cholesterol to support that cell membrane. Um, it is critical for production of your hormones, so testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all of those hormones require cholesterol. Uh, cholesterol is necessary for the body to produce vitamin D, which vitamin D is critical in like 20 plus different processes in the body. Um, it's critical for absorbing different vitamins and cholesterol even actually aids in digestion. Mm -hmm. So cholesterol uh, produces bile salts, bile salts help with digestion. So it does so many things for the body. So just deciding like, oh, cholesterol is terrible, let's get rid of it, actually can have a lot of other implications in the body. 80% um, of the cholesterol is made by the body because the body needs it. Mm. Uh, about 20% comes through what we're eating. So looking at the diet is necessary for sure, um, but again, 80% of it's being made by the body. So if we're making too much cholesterol, we need to look at the body to figure out why we're making too much of it. Right. Um, so the body actually sends cholesterol out as more of a protective mechanism to area, uh, areas of inflammation and damage. We've got a video that goes way more in depth on this. I've done a cholesterol video and a heart disease video yep. that talks a little bit more in depth. Um, but it's, it is released as a response to something happening in the body. The LDL is just the carrier that takes it where it needs to go. So cholesterol is really not the enemy that we think that it is. Um, it's really the inflammation. So there's inflammation going on somewhere in the body. Cholesterol is going there trying to fix that inflammation. Interesting. So it's like if you look at a burning building and every time you look at a burning building, you see firefighters there. Yeah. And you say, well, the firefighters are starting all of these fires. What are they doing? Um, they are there to fix the fire. They didn't start it. Cholesterol is there to fix the inflammation. It didn't cause it. So we need to look and see what actually caused the inflammation, address the underlying issue, and control cholesterol that way. I love that analogy. <laughs> guys, I'm going to remember that. I hope you guys remember that analogy. That's incredible. Yeah. That's exactly, that sounds exactly right. Yeah. That's so it, and it would explain why heart disease rates are not dropping, even though half the world is on a statin medication. Right. It's because blocking the cholesterol is not fixing anything. Mm -hmm. It's not addressing the underlying issue. Um, so again, like I said, LDL is that antioxidant that's going out into the body. It's not a terrible thing. We just don't want too much of it piling up in one area. HDL is the retriever cell. So HDL is, again, great because it goes, gets cholesterol, brings it back to the liver to repair it or get rid of it if we don't need it. So when cholesterol is high, my job as a practitioner is to find out why versus just blocking it. Yes. Again. This is where Cleveland is super helpful because we can find out where the inflammation is and we can start looking again at insulin levels, things like that to see what could be triggering that inflammation. Mm. Lifestyle is a huge thing for inflammation too. So smoking, high alcohol intake, high sugar intake, high carb intake, lots of stress, all those things can cause inflammation in the body. Yeah. So really digging down deep um, to figure out what's going on is the best way to approach all of this. Um, and then, uh, you know, as a practitioner, whenever I see high cholesterol levels and I'm trying to decide what the risk level is here and how aggressive we should be about treating it, I'm also looking at a CT calcium score. We have a video on that, but it looks at the um, calcifications within the arteries. And so if we see high levels of calcification, my level of concern is much higher. If we see low levels or no calcification, I'm much less concerned if the cholesterol is a little bit elevated. Mm. And then we also look at LP little a. That is also on our Cleveland. We've got a video on that, but that is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So if I see a really high LP little a, high CT calcium score, high cholesterol, right. I'm on way higher alert right. than if all those things are normal. Right. There's more to this. There's so much more to this. <laughs> So much more. <laughs> Guys, stay educated and stay healthy. What we're going to do is we're going to link every single video that Robin mentioned in this episode in the description below. Is there anything else you want to add before we call it a podcast? No, just if you can't find someone who will treat you in the way that you want to be treated, then come to Performance Medicine because we'll right. do it. <laughs> Robin, thank you so much. Absolutely. Guys, y'all name it. We explain it. Y'all, we're in Tennessee right now. I don't know another way of saying it. Y'all name it. We explain it. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Don't go away.